think organisations have to accept that disruption from business as usual during such an extensive project is unavoidable. So that will be for the executive team, the board and for wider teams. To combat this, I'd suggest that you make sure you provide extra resources to the teams who will be heavily involved. So governance and treasury, for example, having a dedicated senior project manager who can help coordinate and hold everyone to account is very helpful. And be realistic about what you can achieve during the merger and during integration. Um, plan your must-haves and accept that some things may need to have to wait. So most organisations merge on the basis that they have similar cultures, but they're usually surprised at how this can play out when they get to integration. So small changes and small differences in how you operate can actually have a huge impact on cultural alignment. So I think it's important to look at and be honest about your differences during the merger process and focus on formation of a shared culture for post-merger. Without this, there can be poor outcomes for residents in terms of a loss of feeling connection with their landlord, staff turnover for the same reason in terms of lack of cultural alignment and an impact on service standards. will very much depend on the organisations merging. It can be driven by a variety of issues such as sort of lenders consent requirements. Um, but forming a group structure can enable the merger process to conclude more quickly, which can mitigate risk with project fatigue, disruption from core service and uncertainty for teams. I think group structures can also be attractive because of the idea of maintaining a level of independence and a local brand. But ultimately, most organisations do go ahead to full legal merger eventually. That's driven by a need for alignment, value for money and reducing complexity in the structure. I think scale in itself is not necessarily going to result in weaker local relationships. We can think of large organisations that we interact with on our day to day basis that are actually really good at customer service. So I think it's all about maintaining focus on what counts in terms of core service, implementation being tailored to your communities, and then we come back to cultural alignment being really important as well. Um, but saying you are something doesn't make it true. We talk about assurance a lot in governance, so organisations should apply this to their culture through ethical audits, for example, to satisfy themselves and their stakeholders that they actually are what they say they are. the current climate we will inevitably have some organisations considering closer working and potentially merger. Um, fortunately some may be in financial or other distress. So I'm hoping to demystify some of the process, uh, looking at pitfalls and what successful and not so successful looks like. And my overall aim is to give organisations some practical takeaways and equip them to consider partnerships and mergers with their eyes open.